Welcome. Today I'm really excited because we get to talk about part two of quantum mechanics, another part of quantum mechanics, and that is the Heisenberg uncertainty principle. All right. And I got my nice tricked out little green car to help us talk about it. All right. So the Heisenberg uncertainty principle talks about two things, all right, in combination with each other. And that is that you cannot know exactly, exactly where something is and how much momentum it has at the same time. There's a limit to how much you can know of either one. All right? And for purposes of discussion today, we're just going to consider momentum to be just velocity or how fast it's going. All right? And so what we're saying is you cannot know how fast something is going and exactly where it is at the same time. There's an upper limit and you just can't know. If you know really, really well how fast something's going, you can't know really, really, really well where it is. And there's sort of two ways to talk about it. One way is very quantum mechanical. Another way is very conceptual. We'll start with a conceptual way. We got a little test car, and let's see if we can figure out exactly where and how fast this car is going. So we start off off screen. Zoom, there it goes zooming by. And look, zoom, it can zoom back the other way. It's great fun. can do it all day. All right, so we have our car. Figuring out where a car is is not too bad. All right, so the location will be here, all right, or the location could be there. But uh, that's straightforward, but it's not always clear how do you figure out how fast the car is going. All right, so what we're going to do is we're going to take the car and it's going to come along and if it comes in on the screen here, right, we can time and see how long it takes to go and go off the screen right over here. All right, and so the time it takes to go in and off the screen will tell us, that's a certain amount of time, we can take the distance it moved and divide it by the time it took all right, and that gives us a velocity. So then we know how fast the car is going. Right? Here we go. Whoa! All right, that's great. And depending on the size of the screen you're watching on, that could be a really fast velocity. Or if you have like some ginormous billboard, you're projecting this on Yankee Stadium's billboard or something, that could be, uh, I guess that'd be a faster velocity. Yeah, so if you have a tiny screen, it's a really slow. Right? And look, it's really speeding now. All right, so if you think about this, this this starts to make sense that we can't really know the position and the velocity, right? Because we needed two locations in order to calculate the velocity, all right? And so since uh, if this is cards going really fast, all right, it will be difficult for us to take two measurements really close together, all right? And if we take two measurements really close together, we will know that it traveled from here to there with a certain velocity. And at that velocity, we knew the car was right on here. Well, if it's going really fast, we could widen all right, our measurement, and we'll get a better, more accurate reading about how fast it's going. But now we've lost track of like just where it is. And so uh, you can kind of see that there's always going to be a limit. right? It's either going to be a really wide window that we time its velocity, and then we won't know where it is. Or if we do a really narrow window, and watch its velocity from here to there. <laughs> all right, if we that that's not going to get a very accurate velocity because all the errors in experiment are not going to crop up. All right, and so that's conceptually what we're talking about with the Heisenberg uncertainty principle. But it's not really why it happens. Okay, what re the real reason is quantum mechanics. So stay with me and let's just talk a little bit about why that happens. So the problem comes in because we're thinking about the car as one solid object. Which, yes, it is. But in quantum mechanical terms, okay, everything behaves also like a wave. And that's where the uncertainty principle comes into play and really can be explained a little bit better. All right, so it's not one solid particle, which, you know, this is a solid thing, but it also has wave-like behavior. All right, that's a wiggly thing, right? Some wiggly thing, like you throw a rock into a pond, you see the waves going out. All right, you know what waves look like. They're long and wiggly like that, OK? So you can see you would run into trouble if you're starting to think about things in terms of waves. You can have a tall, thin wave, right? And then you know exactly where the wave is, but you're not going to know uh, its wavelength very well, because you want to have a bunch of waves to kind of measure like how long, what's the regularity of it. You just got this one peak. You don't really know where does it start, where does it end, and all that sort of thing like that. So. Uh, you have the same sort of problem coming in that we had with our car, 
right? We can know where it's at, but it's hard to find the velocity. When we have waves, we can find a wave and make it really sharp and know exactly where it's at, but we're going to have a hard time finding its length because it doesn't repeat over itself. You want to measure wave lengths from the peak of one to peak another. Okay, if you spread it out, you can get a really good wave length, all right, and that help you decide like where it, uh, how fast it's going, all right. But if it's all spread out like this, it's kind of hard to tell just where the wave is, and so you're always running into this problem: where is it, and how fast it's going, and you have this limit, and that's called the Heisenberg uncertainty principle. The you multiply the momentum times the uh, position, okay, the accuracy of those things, and that will turn out and give you this number. You can never get greater than that number. Okay, it, it's smaller than that number, more precise. Okay, and so that will keep you from uh, finding too much information out. And this is a good thing because quantum mechanics will actually break down if this is not true. Okay, basically, no one has ever come up with an experiment where you can know position and momentum to more accuracy than is allowed by the Heisenberg uncertainty principle. And if someone could come up with an experiment that would do that, it would cause all kinds of problems in quantum mechanics, all right? Because they would all fall apart. But since no one's been able to come up with an experiment that will do that, we're pretty good, pretty sure that this is uh, a good way to go. This is the way we understand things. Now, to end it off, we got one more cool thing, and that is that the Heisenberg uncertainty principle can also be done with different dimensions than momentum and uh, position. You can also do it with energy and time. And this, this is what I love, okay? Because of this, a vacuum is not empty. Get that? Right? I'll say it again. Because of this, a vacuum is not empty. So we go to outer space where it's practically a vacuum, almost nothing there, okay? What happens is, is the Heisenberg uncertainty principle can also be applied to energy and time. And what that says is, you can have particles come out of nowhere. Okay, so you just like you have nothing, and then boom, you have something. All right, and that's a particle that appeared out of nowhere. All right, but the limit though is that the more energy this particle has, the shorter the lifetime of that particle. And then you're satisfying the uncertainty principle here, right? Because technically, it's, what the, that says is that you have this limit of energy and time relationship. So if it doesn't exi exist very long, you can't really measure its energy. And so you basically, in outer space, in a vacuum, you can have things appear and disappear again really fast. And so that's the time portion. And if it disappears fast enough, you can actually have a particle of a certain amount of energy. Now, this is not going to create a new universe or do anything really wacky. It's too hard to measure for all but the most sensitive, sensitive experiments. It's not going to mess up your you know, science fair project or something like that. All right? But if conceptually, I love the fact that in space, there are particles that are just <laughs> appearing and disappearing really, 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 really fast all the time. Okay? And so empty space is not really empty. So take that with you as you go. And until next time, where we might talk about other cool quantum mechanics things, remember, you, my friend, are a wave. So, we're going to need to measure something. We're going to measure my car. Ready? Oh, there it is. It's right there.